So we all know that the Canon M50 is very hard to stream with due to a couple setbacks it has. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can stream with the Canon M50. Yo, what's the deal guys? How are we doing today? My name is Joshua Lopez and I'm your live stream and gaming expert. And in this channel, we do tech gear reviews, PC builds, and somewhat of a tutorial just like this one you're about to see. Also, I stream on Twitch, so if you have any questions about any of the videos that you've been watching, head on over to the chat because me or any of my friends would like to help you answer any of the questions you have. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any of the valuable content that's coming up ahead. But most importantly, any of the items I talk about in this video will be dropped down in the description below. Now, the channel does earn a profit off of those links, so anything purchased is greatly appreciated, so thank you for helping the channel grow. All right, so let's talk about what sets the Canon M50 back when it comes to live streaming. Well, we know that it doesn't have a clean HDMI. Let me show you what a not clean HDMI is. And now we also know that when you are streaming with it, you can't get autofocus. It also has a 30 minute shutoff, so you can't stream longer than 30 minutes and the battery life isn't the best. So knowing those limitations, I need to ask you a question. Well, I need you to ask yourself a question or questions. Do you need autofocus? Are you gonna be staying in one spot or will you be moving around? Do you care about the quality that you're putting out onto the internet? Could you make some sacrifice when it comes to the image quality? Are you streaming longer than 30 minutes? I really hope so. I mean, part of streaming. And do you have extra cash to spend for a couple more items to improve your quality? These questions will help you decide which application you will be using to live stream with the Canon M50. All right, let's get into it. So before we start talking about the applications, I do want to make a disclaimer. In each application, I am using a power source. This is what I use for mine. Let's see if I can get it in focus. I will have a link to this item down below. I'm also shooting in 24 frames per second. I like how that looks. It gives it a very nice cinematic look. Plus, it's less stress on your computer. I don't feel the need to stream 60 frames. Um, when it comes to just you sitting and talking, but 24 is what I do my YouTube videos and 24 is what I stream myself in. Also, it is shot in the movie manual mode. That's what's worked the easiest for me and it produces the best quality. After we talk about each application, I will be showing you how to add this into OBS so that you can live stream. All right, so the first application we're gonna be talking about is the EOS Webcam Utility Beta. This is a brand new application that Canon just released. Great thing about it is that you don't have to have a capture card. All you do is plug in a USB cable into the camera and then plug it into your computer. From there, you go to your sources and add it in. What makes this application so great is that it is free. You're also getting autofocus in this and as well as being able to shoot more than 30 minutes. And one of the things that I actually like is that whenever you are live streaming, you still have your LCD screen on so you are able to monitor what you're seeing. Now, there are a couple cons with this application. Unfortunately for this application, I had to uninstall all utility programs that I had already from Canon. For whatever reason, I like to believe that the sources were trying to go to those applications so when i would pull the beta or obs it wasn't giving it any signal so kind of a little frustrating but i deleted those and then i was able to get a video signal from that application now i understand it is free but there was a little bit of deterioration when it comes to the image quality and also there wasn't any type of interface to be able to control any functions it was just what you get is what you get you just download it and then you're able to view what is on your camera which is good for someone who's just starting out but i wanted to see a little bit more functionality and customization when it comes to that but no interface you can't do anything like that and lastly with it being a beta it's not in its full production yet so you might experience some quirks here and there in the future i can't tell you sometimes betas are great sometimes they're not so we'll kind of just see how it plays off so 
Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it actually looks. Hey guys, this is the Canon EOS Utility Webcam application. So the next application we're going to be talking about is SparkleCam. You've probably already heard about it because one, it's pretty solid and it's been out for quite some time. So the cool thing about this application is it's actually pretty much exactly like EOS Utility. However, you get an interface. This interface allows you to customize all lighting, all color, your aperture, um, pretty much full function of your camera. This is something I wanted to see in the EOS Utility app, but we'll see if they get there. With this application, you're still getting autofocus. Your camera won't shut off after 30 minutes. And I think it's cool that you only have to have one cable, which is a USB cable. And just like the EOS Utility, you're still able to see from the LCD screen. But like I said, the interface is probably the best thing about it. So let's take a look do a little bit of a walkthrough through the interface and you'll see what I'm talking about. So the cool thing about this application is that pretty much you have full function of the camera real time. So we take a look over here. We have the aperture set to 1.4. I do have the shutter speed set to 50 and the ISO set to auto and my exposure to negative three. But these are all stuff that you're able to control real time. So even your white balance, and the picture style, I have it set in my camera. It's a custom profile that I use to shoot all my videos. So I have that set. That's why I have it set white balance to auto. Don't really want to mess with anything else. Um, and you can also change the autofocus mode as well. But for whatever reason, I literally just changed it. Oh, right here. You can change the autofocus right here. Life It's to face tracking. If you want to do something else, you can do zone autofocusing or one point autofocusing and all of this stuff is changing on the camera itself um, so autofocus box is changing on the camera uh, at this point you're not able to see it but um, it's working there this one's actually tracking my face so if I move back you'll see my face is going to be in focus for the most part so this is sparkle cam this is what you get and you can also see right here is the most important restart live view every 25 minutes. So this is the main reason why I use this application so that the camera itself doesn't turn off. This is Sparkle Cam with face detection. So I think the biggest con when it comes to this application is that it's a paid service. You do have to pay for it. If you don't pay for it, there will be a watermark and you don't get the 30 minute shut off function that keeps your camera on. But if you have a little bit of money to spend, I would highly recommend this app just because of this functionality. Also, similar to the EOS utility, the image quality isn't the best. And after looking at both, I really think it has something to do with the USB video transfer. Now the third method to stream with the Canon M50 is the method that I have chosen personally. It's a little bit more work and a little bit pricier, but when it comes to video quality, I think that this is how you can get the best quality out of your Canon M50. This setup is going to need a couple of other things. One, you'll still need the USB, you'll need an HDMI cable, and a capture card of some sort. I have used the Cam Link for quite some time and it's worked great. Prices are kind of up there. Currently, I'm using an HD60S just because the Cam Link is being used on another computer. But recently, I found a $25 capture card. This capture card is a steal. It produces great quality. It also sends audio and it's cheap. So I got that link down in the description below. So check that one out. Actually, let me show it to you real quick. So this one right here was like 25 bucks. This sucker's really good compared to all the other capture cards because you're gonna be spending upwards of 150, maybe $200 depending. 
and with this one $25 I honestly bought like 10 because there's that one point no one could get any and um, just helping people out but HDMI plug that sucker in right there and it plugs in USB so it's been working really great I haven't had any issues but if you want to pick one of these up $25 description down below so addition to the capture card I am also running Sparko cam as well the funny thing is, is I'm not sending the feed of Sparkle Cam into OBS. I'm sending the feed of the capture card to OBS. I'm simply using Sparkle Cam because it has a 30 minute shutoff function. So I don't want my camera shutting off. So that is why I use it. However, because I am using the capture card, I don't get autofocus. This isn't something that bothers me. I stay in one place. If I have to move, I'll just adjust the focus. But it hasn't been something that's been limiting me. So you can decide if you want autofocus or not, but let's go ahead and take a look at it and you can see the image quality and how each application compares to each other visually. Hey guys, this is my method I use with manual focus and a capture card. All right, so now that you've seen the quality of all three applications and seen them side by side, you probably already know what you wanna use. So let's go ahead and show you how to put it in OBS. So right now I'm going to show you how to add a video source. This method is the same way for each application that we're going to talk about. So in here, you're gonna see it. And depending on which application you choose to go with, just follow this method. So the first thing to do is head on over to the sources side. You're gonna see I already have some sources here because I was testing everything out, but uh, you see the utility app. This is just a test app, um, my N50, and then the Sparkle Cam. What you're gonna wanna do is yours will be blank. Yours won't even have a monitor. That's just me recording. You're gonna hit this plus sign. So when the plus sign opens, go ahead and go to video capture device. So right here, you can name your device. Whatever application you use, you can say EOS Utility, you can say M50 if you're using a capture card, Sparkle Cam. I mean, if you really wanna do it, you can say, yo mama, uh, yeah, whatever. So we're gonna test that as yo mama. So now here is, that wasn't supposed to happen. So here is the screen you're supposed to be seeing now. So now, you can see that it's already picking up my game capture card. This is through my HDMI, this is my capture card. The other one down below is Sparkle Cam and it's going to pick up that feed. Now, it's not picking up right now because I've already noticed that when I have both the Sparkle Cam and the EOS utility application, it tends to, I don't say crap out, but it's just, they don't, you're not supposed to be using both of them at the same time. So we go over to, here's another one. It's a virtual webcam by Sparkle. I never really use that. And then here is the EOS web utility. And there it is. There I am. So for each of those, depending on what you want to do, if you're going to use a capture card or you're going to be using the webcam utility beta, there it is. So that is how to install a video capture device so that you can view all th all this method will be the exact same way. So just follow that. So, oh, and of course, hit okay right here. So there you have it guys. I hope that this video helped you out so much. But if you still have any type of questions, go ahead and hit me up on Twitch. I'll be glad to assist with any type of question. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any of the valuable content that's coming up ahead. Peace. Thank you.